we move on now uh, with our next speaker, which is uh, Wukong Gökçe. Uh, he holds a master's degree in electrical and electronics engineering from the Middle East Techn Technical University in Ankara in Turkey. And uh, he's an interdisciplinary researcher uh, and an engineer and joined in 2018 the group of Andreas Hirlemann at the uh, Departments of Biosystems and Engineering of ETH in Basel, where he's currently working on his PhD thesis. Today he will speak uh, about work he's, uh, he has done there so far, and uh, the title of his talk uh, is about physiological relevant drug screening approaches to personalized leukemia treatments. Please work on. Yes, thank you very much for the introduction. Let me share my screen. So uh, today I will talk about my PhD project, Leukemia on Chip, which is basically a physiologically relevant drug screening platform to personalize leukemia treatments. So acute lymphoblastic leukemia is one of the most common childhood cancers. And the curing rate of it has significantly increased over 90% during the last decades. However, some subtypes, some genetic subtypes are still incurable and that's occurred due to relapses. For these subtypes, after the diagnosis of the disease, they usually start with an intense treatment, including bone marrow transplantation and a chemotherapy. Uh, and the scientists found a way to proliferate the patient cells, which enables genetically relevant uh, samples where you can screen for drug responses. So they usually start with collecting the patient sample, the leukemia cells from the patients, and then injecting them in immunodeficient mice, which has no immune system. They can proliferate the patient-related and highly related uh, samples for conducting their drug screening. So for the, for the traditional treatment, the clinicians usually start with standard cocktails, uh, of drugs, and they have to wait for months to see the effects and decide how to continue to the treatment. Whereas uh, they can screen the patients for different drugs, meanwhile, using this technology, and they can decide targeted uh, therapies where they can already see the responses of many drugs before starting the treatment. So our collaborators in Kinderspital Zurich uh, established a protocol based on valpolates where they can co-culture these PDX cells, which are patient-derived sonographed leukemia cells, uh, in a co-culture environment with bone marrow-derived mesenchymal stroma cells, a stroma layer, which fits the leukemia cells and keep them viable during the course of drug treatment. So by using this protocol, they were able to screen 68 patients for 60 different anti-cancer drugs. And here on the right panel on the screen, you can see a heat map indicating the response of 68 different patients in each row uh, grouped based on their genomic subtypes of the leukemia for 60 different anti-cancer drugs clustered based on their expected activity for patients, where the expected activity decreases from left to right, as you see the screen. And the color code represents the uh, activity of the drug from uh, red to blue, which, uh, which decreases. So as you can see, for the cluster in G, which are usually uh, ineffective or uh, drugs with low activity for patients, you can see some cases where the activity is extremely high and which promises a personalized chemotherapeutic treatment for uh, leukemia patients for the first time in the literature to our knowledge. So, their well-based protocols are promising personalized, uh, personalized chemotherapy uh, with the aid of automated and high-throughput screening, but it's also limited to physiological uh, conditions. So the flow conditions are limited to static, so it's on a well plate, and they are limited with endpoint screening. Uh, thanks to the advances in microfluidics, we can take their approach and then enhance it a bit by including physiological conditions such as drug metabolism, to which I'm coming uh, in a second in the next slide, uh, and perfusion of nutrients and metabolized from the meta uh, drug metabolism activated drugs. Also, when the requirements are met, you can use online viability tools like impedance electrical, electrical impedance spectroscopy, 
for label true and high throughput uh, reading uh, of viability of cells to assess, for instance, mode of action of drugs. Uh, this is also a topic of my PhD, stu uh, PhD study, but I will not focus on this today. So, when it comes to physiologic conditions in pharmacokinetics, of course, the most important uh, one is the liver for metabolic transformation for activation or inactivation of drug substances. And metabolism can drastically influence the fate of compounds. It determines the clearance and inactivation in our bodies, and it can generate bioactive compounds that could possess toxic properties on targeted, uh, for targeted therapies. And liver-mediated enzymatic transformations can be exploited to increase pharmacokinetic aspects of some compounds, uh, such as ifosomide here, which is a product which needs to be converted to be toxic on uh, leukemia cells. And thanks to the advances in microphysiological systems, we now have 3D construct of liver cells, hepatocytes, uh, which are transferable and can be co-cultured in microfluidic environments with different cells or organ models to conduct drug screening experiments. And uh, in Sphero, a spin-off from our lab has been developing these uh, models for years now. So having the uh, organ model, we can use this in well-based protocols already by conditioning the medium uh, spiked with the products uh, for some time, let's say a day, and then transferring this conditioned media with the activated drug, the isophosphamide must start here in this case, uh, to the targeted treatment wells where you have leukemia cells and stroma layer, and then screen the uh, activity of the drug after the end of the treatment. But this is limited uh, by the amount and short half-life of the transport metabolites, as they have a few hours of short, uh, a few hours of clearance in the media by themselves. Also, when you condition the media, the culture media is already depleted of nutrients by the micro tissues before starting the drug treatment. To solve these limitations, you can use microfluidic platforms. And I used uh, a multi-tissue microfluidic platform designed in our lab previously by another PhD student, Profilo, which has two parallel channels, uh, each having 10 different microtissue compartments, which are funnel-shaped for easy transfer of microtissues and also air exchange, uh, and having two barriers to protect the microtissues from the shear stress, and uh, two large reservoirs in the end of the microchannels, which can be used to generate a gravity-driven flow when you tilt the devices from one side to another. And each of these chips are standard microscopic glass size, uh, glass sized. And then when you uh, use a specific holder, they have the standard size of 384 well plates. So you can use automated tools and multi-channel micropipettes. So in order uh, for a proof of concept experiment for my experiments, uh, for my project, I modified the same chip, which was made of polystyrene, which is biocompatible and uh, suitable for mass production for high throughput screenings in the future by using a PDMS based uh, bottom where I had the same channel structure, but uh, an elevation corresponding to the liver micro tissue compartments. And this elevated micro uh, platform uh, enables to minimize the direct physical interaction between our leukemia cells and more bone marrow cells and uh, the liver micro tissues, as this might interfere with the drug metabolism during the course of treatment. So for the proof of concept experiment, I fabricate the chips and uh, coat, the, coat the channels with fibronectin. And then on the day of coating, I see the cell, uh, see the bone marrow cells from the uh, inlets to the channel and wait for one day for them to get used to the uh, environment as I change, I have to change the culture medium here. And then the next day I add uh, the leukemia cells, patient derived leukemia cells to the same system. And then the next day I transfer the liver micro tissues and add the drug, uh, add the drug compounds to the uh, micro channels and then wait three days uh, while tilting the chips continuously on a tilting platform. Uh, for the cells to be exposed to the drug. 
And in the end of three days exposure, I collect the cells using Acumax and then uh, stain them with propidium iodide and then use flow cytometry to assess viability. So to do so, uh, the very first thing uh, I do is to record the scattering uh, information of the cells where the forward scattering amplitude in the horizontal axis corresponds to the size information and uh, the size scattering amplitude in the vertical axis shows the granularity information of all the events recorded. And then I select the cells, uh, leaving the cells and events in the borders and also in the origin of the plot out because they uh, are debris and also the cells outside the uh, detection range, which is on purpose to uh, filter out the larger cells because they are uh, hepatocytes and mesenchymostromal cells. And then I continue with uh, GFP expression uh, because my mesenchymal cells are GFP expressing. So I can filter them out already by selecting GFP minus GFP negative cells or uh, by looking at a cell tracker, cell trace violet, which I use to uh, stain my patient derived cells before starting the experiment. This way, I only uh, filter my patient derived cells uh, to assess their dead or alive information by looking at the propidium iodide uh, expression. And by repeating this for every single uh, treatment condition, I can plot the corresponding variabilities for different uh, treatment conditions. And here on the screen, you see the static uh, results where I had the cells, uh, the leukemia cells with stroma layer spike with the drug, but there is no metabolic activation here. So this is only the ifosomite at three different concentrations. And you can already see that for the lower concentration of ifosomite, we don't see a decrease in viability. Whereas for uh, one millimolar concentration, you see a decrease in viability already due to the toxicity of the compound itself. And I repeated the same conditions on chip uh, on our microfluidic platform uh, when I had the liver market issues for continuous transformation of phosphamide to the active metabolite uh, isophosphamide mustard, which is uh, cytotoxic to the leukemia cells. And now you can see a decrease in viability even in the lower concentrations around 0.1 millimolar. And you see a lower concent a lower viability compared to the static case also for the higher concent uh, concentration due to the additional toxicity of uh, due to the additional toxicity of the ifosomite at one millimolar concentration so this results suggest that uh, we can use our microfluidic platform for continuous uh, supply of metabolites thanks to the liver micro tissue co-culture in the environment and also the perfusion of uh, nutrients and metabolites takes to the um, gravity driven flow of our devices to see the metabolic uh, effects on uh, drug screening experiments. So uh, the aim of my project was to design a platform which is physiologically relevant uh, to the leukemia drug screening to personalize chemotherapy of the patients. And uh, the early results suggest that our platform is already capable of mimicking drug metabolism on chip. And I repeated, uh, I did an experiment on a high-risk PDX ALL, which was uh, one of the genetic subtypes with, uh, which was incurable with an ifosomite uh, treatment, which is widely used uh, drug in leukemia treatment. And we hope that the platform will enable uh, high throughput screening response of patients to the products which are commonly used in cancer treatment and which will enable personalized chemotherapy in the future. With this, I'm already at the end of my talk and I was a bit fast, I guess, because of uh, my nerves. <laughs> so uh, I, I'd like to thank my supervisors, Andreas Sierleman and Mario Mod Modena to help me with the project uh, for two years now. And I want to acknowledge my funding from personalized health and related technologies uh, strategic, strategic focus area of ETH domain and our uh, collaborators at Kinderspital Zurich, uh, Beat Bornhauser and Jean-Pierre Burkan for their scientific discussions and providing the patient-derived sonograph cells and also Inspiro for delivering the uh, micro tissues. Thank you very much for listening to me and if you have any questions, I'm happy to answer them. <laughs>